Cat TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support Cat TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station. It's the Southwest Vermont Supervisory Union's uh, Policy Drafting Committee. We have a full agenda tonight. We have a, a full form of board members and with staff alike to be here. Uh, and we have legal support uh, on the line as well tonight. So uh, I'll do what we normally do. I strongly encourage people to attend uh, in person. It's difficult to keep going back and forth between the Zoom, but what we have it, but we're encouraging everybody to meet in person. And if not, then that's the only option. So the agenda tonight we have is public comments. And it's from uh, September the 12th. We have uh, policy 5010 is uh, Title I Parent Environment Compact will be uh, discussed by Laura, or reviewed by Laura. Uh, then we have policy 5050, uh, a discipline of pupils and suspension and expulsion. Uh, next, and then we have 5085, search and seizure. We have policy uh, 5087, threat and disruption to the school operation. And the next one we have is behavior intervention. We have the tracking sheet. And then down below for uh, uh, FYI, uh, uh, these policies are going around through the different uh, district, districts to be uh, approved a want, for the warning approval. And then below that, we have others for consideration. And that's what we take uh, policies off of, we gather from everybody that may have policies of, of a concern, and if we didn't have a chance to put them on, we list them down for future consideration. We get information from the Vermont School Board Association, cross-reference guide, and all those things. So we got, and we got parents that may question certain things. So this is the process by which we uh, get the policies and then if we don't have enough under that list we go out and look at the others to try to update those that may not have, have a, a, a turnover date that's recent so with that the uh, next meeting is scheduled for december the 5th and if we uh, I, what i'd like to do is find out whether we have any problems with the agenda as written and whether we need to make any changes to it Seeing none here, and I'm seeing no hands on the screen. So we would then move on to proceed. No, I'll probably comment for anyone is there. Anyone out that may have a public comment? See anybody? There is none. Okay, the next one is the minutes from September the 12th. Hopefully everyone had a chance to read those minutes. Move and to approve. Dick has moved to approve. Uh, we don't have to have a second because of the number of individuals, but if you want to second it, you can. Uh, if not, uh, any uh, discussion or questions about the minutes? see none and I hear none, then uh, all in favor of the minutes as presented is by raising your hand or saying aye. Aye. And aye. all the ones here, aye online, the codes hands up. I can't see Jackie. I can't see uh, uh, Karen. I can hear your voice though. Are you in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Uh, and, and no one is with that everybody accepted the minutes so based on that uh, so it's a hundred percent thank you the uh, 
The next statement, uh, the next item on the list is Title I Parent Involvement Compact. Mm -hmm. And Laura has uh, agreed to uh, review this annually as required by record. So we'll have her do that as well. So we're Florida, you have a full record. Thank you. So this is the annual, uh, we're meeting the, the annual requirement uh, of this uh, particular policy and it, it meets the um, title requirements under family engagement as well. So uh, at the start of the 22-23 school year, we held Title I meetings in um, all 10 of our schools. All of our schools are school-wide. Each school principal communicated the event to families prior to the event. All 10 meetings were attended by building administration and all but one meeting had representation from the district leadership team. A total of 31 family and um, community members attended the meetings during the fall of 2021. This fall, we had 221 families and community members attend um, the meetings either in person or shared uh, feedback via email to uh, some of our schools. Each agenda included items that highlighted the school family compact. Data um, review was shared at the board meetings during the fall. Parent rights were shared at each meeting, school level goals, and there was time for open discussion or to answer any questions um, or collect feedback. Each meeting ended with an opportunity to, to provide feedback linked to this particular policy and at this time, no feedback was provided. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Since we couldn't see lawyers, you got to do it over again. No. <laughs> I'm having trouble letting Lisa share her screen. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully, everybody heard all of that. I asked the order, Jackie and, and, and Karen and Nicole. Every, did everybody hear? Laura, okay. I heard it, but I, I'd like to repeat the numbers for this year. You said 31 yes, for we, duo. Last year, um, we had a total of 31 family and community members attend um, the title meetings. And this year, we had 221. It was great. We had a great turnout uh, this year. It was great. Are there any other questions uh, concerning the... Uh, review of Title I Parent Involvement Compact. Just one more. So the increase was probably due to COVID, right? Uh, and I, Jack, it's super interesting. Some of the school, all the schools last year had virtual um, Title I meetings because they were held at the beginning of the year. So you are correct. And this year we were back in person and I think principals are getting incredibly creative in how they engage families, building in times. Um, during meetings, um, just re some real um, creative problem solving, which is this. Thank you. I think it led to the increase. Okay. Uh, thank you. I forgot to announce <laughs> that Jonathan was here in the room <laughs> and, uh, uh, and being in attendance. So, welcome, Jonathan. The, the next item um, is policy 5050. And uh, we have data that's online as well to uh, discuss this. I didn't know whether she wanted to uh, say something first. Uh, do you want us to proceed on? Uh, one of the things about the policy, we hadn't had a chance to change the header to the new heading uh, setup that we would be putting in because this is a working copy. And, we need a change in everything if we didn't have to here until after the meeting was over with and have all the things updated. So a discipline of students, uh, suspension and expulsion of students, policy number 5050 is up to our discussion. And so at this time, I'll ask Aina, do you have comments you would like to make first or you want us to make comments? Um, probably comments from you all. I mean, my comments are on the document. Yep. So the comments that, that Dina made were online uh, and with the copy. And so uh, they there for, for us to review. And uh, the uh, 
I'll ask if there are any board members here that want to make comments. Chris? We had, it's, it's just, it's a question for Dina about one of the comments she added uh, to section D on page one. And if you're going to get to that, Dina, I'll, I'll stop asking my question, but I, I, I'm hoping you can offer some clarity as to your note about uh, issues within the last two years. Well, she won't, I will. So I'm going to, a part of it is um, not the issue of discretion of uh, overall of actually um, involving law enforcement. There is a bigger issue that I think we've been trying to deal with um, as well as all of your neighbors and 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 all of the states have been trying to deal with about law enforcement involvement in schools. But um, my concern out of this one was um, one, it should go with there is another policy which I think we're still doing work on and Laura's going to tell me exactly the title of it. It's the one that is actually dealing with the police coming into the school. I think we're still dealing with that, right, Laura? It is Yes. 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 So the, the part that Chris is asking on this particular part of the policy, if we're down to that, I, I mentioned something about the header and that was the only thing up there. And I just, before we finish up, C had a, a typo and that was not a question or problem. But it's the last part of G, nothing within the, this policy shall okay. limit the administration discretion of involving law enforcement as needed. I, I don't generally have an overall concern about, I, I think, yes, there are times when law enforcement has to be involved. Concerns that pop up about the issue of discretion is one is that they, administration is a very broad term and that covers a lot of people in your organizations. Right. Um, there should be, um, I think maybe some defining characteristics of who has the authority to do that. I'm assuming that what we're calling is, is building administrators and they also should be doing it in consultation with the superintendent or your assistant superintendent. Right. And that's one of the things that we wanted to, I wanted to make sure that as opposed to leave, because when parents read that and they say, well, administrator, anybody in the building that they are most confronted with is an administrator to them. And so what this is supposed to be is a principal line uh, in this, at least principal or system principles are along that particular line in turn in consultation with the administrator. I mean, with, with the superintendent to involve law enforcement is what needed to be clarified in that area. Yeah, I, I think also, Chris, I think also I'm highlighting it because I think within the context of your policies, you all need to decide if you're going to have the overall broader conversation about issues that have been coming up in terms of equity and diversity and inclusion and support for, um, you know, everybody who doesn't look like me, right? So, um you know, I, it, it seems to me that, that you know, there is a lot of change from when this was initially done about involving law enforcement. I think there's a lot of knowledge right. of, about the impact of people. And so I think you're, that's also another reason why I highlighted it. Um, you know, your board could decide not to have that conversation. Um, I get it. But it's, it's you know, from my perspective, a, a, an area where maybe from my, that I should highlight for you to have that conversation, to make that decision, to have it or not. And then, I, I do know that the language should change I, uh, along that line. It's the conversation piece, whether that should be in the, the administrative briefs part in terms of how that should be accomplished. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, policy is, is putting out your philosophical, you know, basically what your philosophical underpinnings are, right? Um, of an organization. These are the things we're going to follow. These are what we believe in. You know, this is the behavior that we're trying to encourage and support. 
Um, I, I don't disagree with you on that. I, I think from a purely legal perspective, administration's discretion always concerns me when we don't identify who the people are. Right, and I agree. I, I flagged it uh, as well. Lisa has a question. What if it was changed to superintendent slash designee? Mm -hmm. That would, uh, that would still, uh, the, the principal shouldn't be doing it without the mm -hmm. approval of the superintendent. Unless in this, by definition, we had in here is is there a dash need of an emergency at that particular time and so forth along that line. So we have that language somewhere else. How about Jackie and Nicole? And I I agree, I agree with the superintendents instead of administration, because it, if if the person's a good administrator, they will uh, you know involve the superintendent anyway. So I, I would just put superintendent there. And anything that's going to be up at such a level that you have to take immediate action is going to go to the superintendent or designee anyway. So I like Lisa's. Uh, well, that was Dick, uh, Fran, and I'm just trying to make sure that we get the minutes right for that. Chris over there, Chris Murphy. Yeah, thank you, Leon. So I, so I what this doesn't sound like it addresses, though, are those schools that have law enforcement there. Yeah, the, the elementary, the unified elementary district had to deal with, has been sort of dealing with this idea of school based uh, uh, school resource officers, rather. Uh, it hasn't been an issue in the schools in Bennington because there just aren't the bodies to fulfill that, those roles. But we know in Shaftesbury and how old we have uh, school resource officers. So I, I guess I would like to see something in this policy address that we do have sort of two different systems in play here. The schools with law enforcement present and school without law enforcement present. And does the presence of a school resource officer change what the steps need to be before those come to one? So not, it's not common anymore. Okay, okay. so it's just a chest right then. So I mean, it's still in the show. Anthony doesn't have their school resource officer. Okay. Does, does so can I can, can I make some right. clarifications though? Because yeah. I, I I think when you're having this conversation, you have to have clarifications. Yeah. You actually right. that was Chris. I was trying to make sure I was going to repeat what he was saying, and if you. Uh, the clarification, Nina wants to clarify that you're talking about the different uh, versions of law enforcement within the school by name and so forth. Yeah. And so that's a whole lot of conversation itself. I'm going to hear what Nina has to say on there. So I, I want to be very particular, and, and, and I apologize, but you all know words matter. Um, and, and that's sort of my profession. You don't have school resource officers. That not one of the law enforcement personnel who are within your school buildings are school resource officers. You have law enforcement personnel who are doing a detail that may or may not have had some training that school resource officers go into. And I think words are kind of important on that. Um, I, so, you know, the reference to, to, to being a school resource officer, that's a bigger, broader um, job than I think the men and women who are going into your buildings are doing. The policy that I can't remember the name of that we've talked about, you do have a policy that specifically does talk about the interaction of law enforcement um, within the context of your buildings in terms of, I think it's your search and seizure policy it talks about yes. it. 5090, I found it. That's right. Um, and talks about how there is a bifurcating or separating line between law enforcement and, and school administration, school personnel in, in search and seizure. There's a very clear bright line. Um, so there's that. There's also the fact that when you have um, the law enforcement uh, details that are coming into your, your schools, they are not, at least my understanding is, they are not subject to the immediate, they're not subject to the supervision of the district, they're subject to the supervision of the police chief. I may be wrong about that, but I, that was at least the last time, you know, I had this conversation. So I just, I, I get what you're saying, Chris, some of them do. Um, I think your principals also, when they do have the details that visit, have been 
in my conversations with them, very mindful about the individual law enforcement professional who is in the building on one of those details who may be doing something like reading, reading to a group they try to not utilize that person to then deal with something which is typically within the realm of law enforcement, because that seems to be running counter to, to the main reason why um, the law enforcement professionals are in your buildings on a detail. So I, I just throw that out there. Right, I, I, I just wanted to bring this to Leon a little bit further. One of the things that, that Jim has done is move security into central office in terms of that whole thing about security in the school in terms of SVSU. And uh, there, the, the, my understanding that we're trying to make sure that we do pretty much the same thing in terms of the job description, defining what it is that we're looking for in those individuals. And it should be consistent throughout the whole school, because what Dan is talking about is exactly true. It, uh, if you, uh, it, 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 the, in the resume that we're asking for is we're looking for security individuals that may need some special training and school methods and so forth to be able to manage with the kids. Uh, law enforcement is in itself is, is tied to the the law enforcement in the community. And that's not what we were trying to say. We wanted to really put out here all over the place. We wanted to have a, a step in between with security involving the school system and individuals that we train to be able to manage those kind of things. And when necessary, uh, Law enforcement could be will be called to manage or help with something, uh, a working confrontation with the superintendent on issues or his designee on an issue to manage something. So I'm trying to say I don't know whether we've gotten all of those things cleared up and straightened out yet, but uh, we're moving security of SBSU, which is a big thing, into the SBSU arena, and it should take care of all of its member districts. And the job descriptions, when I looked at them last time, what it is that we're saying that we're hiring a person for, the emphasis wasn't to say that we got to have this one over here for that. They may have that requirement, but that's not what the job is supposed to be titled on them and accepted. And that's where we're trying to get this freaked out here. I don't know how far we've gotten with all of that, but he's good. Can I uh, can I inject something here? Uh, we're, we're talking about discipline other than suspension or expulsion. So it's detention, it's withdrawal of privileges, uh, it's uh, restoration and and uh, restitution, and then it, it's the fourth one. I think that's the one you're most concerned about. Uh, and help me if if I'm in, wrong with the uh, involvement of other than school personnel, mandatory participation in instruction, for example, anger management, social skills, drug and alcohol counseling. So uh, if a kid is throwing chairs, I as the teacher wouldn't want to be in that room, nor should the children be in that room. So what happens? And so you're going to discipline that kid because they were throwing chairs, say, and um, you don't get, <laughs> who do you get? <laughs> Ghostbusters, you know? Uh, so so I don't know what you do in that situation as an administrator, other well, than- Well, Jackie, the, what, I, um, I, I, what I wanna do is, is bring you back to this particular part of D here, and then we'll go on to some of those others, because what we're saying here is who should be responsible for being district, having the district, uh, the discretion for involving law enforcement. Okay, so if we in, can in apply agree. in well, the 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 title says in apply in uh, this in imposing discipline, 
You know, uh, do we have law enforcement imposing the discipline? No, we no, have no, no. That's that's not what we're saying here. It's what that's why I'm trying to say that this is something that should be in the school in terms of superintendent, principal, in terms of the fighting administration. We never know to what degree something is going to happen, and we don't want to tie the hands of administrators because if they see and know and have the right interpretation of something, they may have to involve law enforcement. So of course. we need to leave that there, but we don't want it to be blanket. And what the problem is, it's being blanket because we said earlier, parents in, in the community look at that and see administrators and they think everybody is administrator. Uh, so we want to define that better by accepting a particular title from the, the superintendent or its designee. I, I understand. I understand. And I understand, and I understand Le Leon. And if it's that grievous, that's why I said before it should be the superintendent who makes the call. Okay. So then I'm in sake for time, I'm going to try to move this along. If anybody have any opposition to that, we can get that in there. And then we'll move on to the next part of this. What do we get in there? there? We're, yeah. We're, we're taking <laughs> it not clear. Well, when it says that nothing's within this policy, she'll limit the administrator. And we're saying the superintendent of his designee, and he may slash, uh, do we want, Jim, do you want principal or just designee? Designee. Designate because sometimes it's the vice principal, particularly at the high right. school. Yeah, okay, so we got that, and that's that's what we're going to put in that section right there for the, to move this on. So I allow 10 minutes for this, we don't want to. <laughs> okay, all right, now on, on the next page, thank you for all those comments. Uh, um, if everybody can live with it, I didn't get a chance to hear from Nicole or hear from uh, I'm trying to get a nod, I can't see you. So I need you to say something to be able to make sure you understand. If I, if I have an issue with it, Leon, I'll speak up. Okay. All right. Uh, on the next page, short-term suspension in here in terms of the uh, amount of time uh, that's involved. And, and that language uh, describes that we can only do that up to 10 days without having to do that and so that's clarification that's all okay with everybody okay i'm seeing a nod or shake a head here so forth and the superintendent may suspend a, a, a pupil for 10 days or less for violation without the approval of the school board and that's a true statement this is a really um not to content but more to when you refer to uh a title and a gender, it would be better if you could say superintendent or their designee okay. instead of that's his Nicole. or her. I just want to yes, say everybody know who that's Nicole. She that's me. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we can't tell who, who's who. So okay. But, got it. You, is that okay? You got that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We got it. Thank you, Nicole. Um so thank you, because I'm the one who unfortunately did it, but I appreciate the reminder, Nicole. Yeah. Uh, the next one is on the B, item three, opportunities for students to uh, tell his or her side of the story and present any evidence relevant to the allegation prior to the imposition of suspension. That's, does anybody have any problems with that? No. If not, then uh, uh, at this point, those were the, oh, no, I go on phase three, long-term suspension. And again, at, uh, on long-term suspension, A, uh, consistent with the policy in the state board rule, uh, the principal or the superintendent may recommend and so we took out principal and said superintendent may recommend uh, to the school board that a pupil uh, be suspended for an indefinite period of more than 10 days. Okay, so that's if everybody can live with that. 
Okay, we're all set. Those were all of the changes that we saw that needed to happen that occur with this. Thanks for Dana doing a, a good job of feeding that information in to for us on this policy. So with those changes, I would like to see this policy move right on to SVSU 50-50 with those corrections that, that are all mentioned here. Thank Leon, you know, this is Nicole. Yes, Nicole. I have a question about process. At what point do these get reviewed by the um, principals? It's supposed to go, well, I can give it, you, Jim, do you want to answer that? Or do you want me to give a shift? Uh, we make the practice of principal meetings, including a policy for review, not every policy. There's a rotating of policies that come out at principal meetings, which was a recommendation from this committee a couple of years ago, started that process. So did, the, did they, if your question is, did they see these specific changes to this policy prior to it coming to the board? No. Yeah. So, it, so, you know, did we ask for their input in these changes? No, we, there, these changes were more with our, Dina, that's what we sent them to. Yeah. But before, yes. before boards <laughs> will adopt them, do they go to the principals for input and review? Well, they'll, you know, they'll go, it'll be in the packet that every principal <clears throat> does get. Right. So the packet that goes out for warning, all of the principals are on there to get these things. And we're asking all of them to look at the things that are pertinent in terms of special policies and procedures that affect them in, this, in the building area and schools and so forth and, and the manufacturing that. So that's that's how it's supposed to be going. Is um, we used to, well, we if if we thought it was something that we may say, Jim, you probably want to make sure that uh, this particular the part of the school district, the school. Uh, with the uh, the uh, and guidance of one of the of the part may need to see some of these and make sure that they understand some of the changes that affect them directly. So those things are out there. Administrators are supposed to be looking at what affect those individuals directly in a particular job function, so that they'll be well aware and up to date as what it is that's happening. Okay. Well, thank you, Lisa. I can tell you that all the principals do get the policy committee packet, so they're aware of what policies are coming up for review and, and talking also. Okay. All right. Uh, we were about to say that we wanted to send this policy on for warning. And so with that, I didn't hear any nays or no's, and we'll I'll have this prepared and go on the SBSU for one. Thank you. The, uh, the next policy is search and seizure, which is policy 5085. And I'll uh, open the floor up for that for a discussion. For any that want to uh, address issues with this policy before I do, uh, before Dina. Being and listening, I don't, it's, it's up. Does anyone have any questions? There were a couple of things that uh, was added by legal and that's on the on this policy on the one number one was computers so uh, loan properties shall mean desks lockers textbooks and and a lot of emphasis on computers because we put computers out here big time now okay so that was the change there you don't have any other for that one uh, uh, well may i may i suggest that you do electronic devices, uh, which include computers, because uh, we now have other things like iPads and um, pencils 
uh, electronic pencils. So electronic and the pencil, yeah, we, you know, the are pencils are like this. Look, I just wanted to make sure you play on this. The purpose of this policy is it's paraphrase loan property. So this is the loan property. So I guess like um, a, someone can make the argument a Chromebook, but it is a computer. I mean, yeah, right. We could it could say computers and electronic devices and other electronic devices because some students do have an iPad, which then so I guess someone could split hairs and say it's not a computer. Yes, which is loan to certain certain grade loan. Okay, we're getting that put in there, Jackie. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, everybody else, anybody else have any comments for that particular section? That's a good. Okay. Uh, moving down this particular policy on the number four, uh, there is, it's in the, uh, I'm not going to go through the, uh, I think this is the second sentence, a second paragraph search. So not be intrusive uh, search by the uh, school uh, person, personnel shall not be done at the request of law enforcement. And um, that is exactly true. The searching should not be intrusive and it should not, searching should by school personnel should not be done at the request of a law enforcement officer. I don't know why we had it. I mean, we put it in there. You can't talk, speak any more than that, but it shouldn't be that they should call up and tell you to do a search. That's what that is, okay? So if anybody have any problem with that part of the statement? No, okay. Unless an emergency situation, drug, alcohol, safety concerns exist in the best judgment of the, um, Yeah, school administrators. Missed my line here. Look at all. Does anybody have any problems with that? If not, we're yeah. you, sorry, Chris. Yeah. So just in keeping with the changes we made before, should we change that from school administrator to superintendent or their designee? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that could be that right here, school administrator. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we? Would it actually be the superintendent who made the? Yeah. I mean, I, I would. Yeah, I, would all, uh, I would be getting. I called every day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, it it so needs to be something that's manageable for, for searches. For search. Well, I don't get. I mean, if we put that in, you don't get now. But you right. Don't yeah. Right. I think that I because it, it really is more of a school based issue. Okay. So they search the students. You know, go on a go in a student's locker, go in, go on their computer. Okay. Then I might get a call if if they find something. Yeah. yeah. Does, do you have a sense as to how often searches like this are happening? I would say a week doesn't go by. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's more often than I would have. Uh, <laughs> so what you're Between saying? Middle school, high school, Arlington, you know, like everything from like, you know, yeah. Okay. So what, what you're saying here in this particular case, then, as opposed to saying, I mean, this is, this is what we're saying, building administrator, the, the actual building administrator is what you're getting at, Chris, uh, who, I forget who was asking the question. I was asking the question if we want to, if we want to assign the superintendent to the, to the task of approving these, but if it's happening with that frequency, you can ask that we let the building administrator do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the building administrator, yeah. 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 administrator of principal, but we can leave it. Do you want the word okay. building administrator in no. there? School administrator, chiefs. That's okay. That's yeah. what that yeah. person is. Yeah. 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 School the, administrator. So the right. sentence okay. is a. <laughs> This sentence is taking a, a limitation of that unless an emergency situation existed, your your principals were obligated to make a good faith effort to contact the parent or the legal guardian prior to searching the student, um, their outer clothing or personal belongings. I put in or in the best judgment of the school administrator because it seems to me that there are times 
that there may be uh, in the school administrator's judgment reasons why they would not contact the parent beforehand. There's no obligation to contact a parent before a kid is searched. Um, of their outer clothing or personal belongings. I think that your your um, district has always tried to be very nice about um, having parents be able to have some sort of say in that. So that's what that's the change that I made. Just yeah. So. I I think that's a very good change because. It, you eliminate a lot of um, uh, flashbacks, you know, to, um, oh, you, you just did this to my kid. Whereas, you know, if they know ahead of time, uh, they can do all their protesting up front and even be there, right, Dina? Yeah. We, we're going to give it, you know, thanks. We're going to give it to, uh, I, I understand. So uh, in the best judgment of the school administrator and so we We'll, uh, we all understand that and we'll uh, go with that in terms of a reaction there. If we need something else, we'll probably have to do some additional administrative type of things to really interpret that. But that's that's clear enough, I think. Uh, to me. Very good. Uh, did I, it was on the next page two of three uh, in section five, just uh, knowledge and so if they added the word knowledge in there and so uh, all files and documents maintained on uh, such computers may be reviewed such prints printed copies and uh, downloads otherwise uh, reproductive by uh, reproduced by the school personnel at will or without the consent of without consent or knowledge of any student. Okay. So if that's one of those things that they have to be dealing with loan property and whatever they need to do that, they can. Okay. Uh, are there anything else that someone have in terms of comment for policy 5085? No. If not, then I think we'll move right on with the warning of that for SVSU. At the end, when it references the other policy, there's a spelling correction that should be made to the policy interrogation. We're at the end under references. Got it. Yeah. Maybe so. there should be no. <laughs> Okay, I see that. I didn't, I didn't bring Eight, down that book. Four million. Okay, thank you. That was Nicole. Got it. Um, next policy, I don't know how am I doing with time kind of overall, it's 5087. Uh, it's the next policy, and uh, that policy threat and uh, disruption of the school, uh, threat and disruption <clears throat> to school operations. Okay, so this policy is up. Dina has made some comments. They are down there. And if we have any objections to any of the comments and additional comments to those, we can start to hear them right now. And so I'll take a uh, conversation from the floor on any of these starting with. I can't see any highlights. <laughs> it's not up yet. It's not <laughs> up yet. But then this is a copy you got sent to you in the packet and online. So, uh, no. well, the first thing is header, and yeah. that's the same, Chris. Yeah. The, head, the header, you know, needs to get taken care of. Uh, so, yeah. page two, exactly. um, under sanctions, then discipline, uh, point number two, Dina, you just made a, a comment that uh, suspensions can't be for longer than 10 days. Do you have recommended language for to replace uh, 5A2 on page two? Saying modification to the district needs. Wait a minute. Are we going on page two? I'm still on page one. Yeah. I'm, yeah, but I was on page one. Sorry. I just turned Chris turn the move on. So we are on. You okay. Know how that's <laughs> it works. Okay. On, on. Yes. Okay. I'll get here. We'll move on if nobody else has any problem. 
Is, is that free on here? He's saying DLAS 5. Uh, if students found a body that board after a hearing to have violated the provisions of this policy, she'll be expelled uh, for at least one calendar year. And so just, it should be a year statement in there. It should be to the end of the year or 90 days. Is this new information pertaining just to elementary kids? Is, Dean, is that what that's supposed to be? Elementary age students may not be able to be expelled. No, eight, under eight can cannot be suspended. So I'm assuming they, I don't know, that means they can't be expelled either, Dina. Uh, but expulsion so, is limited in time so, by okay. statute to 90 days, a reminder of the school year, of the remainder of the school year if uh, if that's longer or whatever along that line. So you're saying, should I change that information that, that language? I was actually referring to the one above that, to number two, just above that. Um, Dina made a note that, um, so it reads currently, the student, should, the student may be suspended until a school board hearing can be conducted. And Dina's note is that suspensions by law can only be for 10 days or, or less. That's correct. So I'm wondering if she has any recommended language to replace number two as it's currently. Uh, I think maybe we lost. I, 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 we, we yeah, have the other language. I don't think we can hear you, Dina. I see her here. Okay. Yes. Oh, but I thought that part Oh, of can you hear me now? Yes, we can now. I'm sorry, I was muted and Chris heard all of my, you know, my <laughs> gasping about asking me to hear Chris's out. question, Dana. I did hear it. So um, there should be language. Um, it, my concern is, how would I say it? Let me think about it, Chris. But my concern is you can't have, you know, you know, you can't have done your board meeting and decide to wait until your next board meeting. Yeah, right. What if we said, what if we said something like, uh, the board must meet within 10 days to discuss. So, so there may be for other kids less than 10 days that are available um, for your general like kids who receive special education services or have the protection of a 504 plan. Um, there's a max of 10 days. So um, I would say that I would say that a school board hearing, I would switch it up and say a school board hearing shall be scheduled within and let's, you know, within 10 days of the um, of the incident. And the student may be suspended as uh, it, it, provided for under what's it 1162 do i have the discipline 16 bsa 1162 that's the top of my head but we have some way else that suspension may not be more than 10 days unless it is a recommendation uh, or have a hearing with the school board. I yeah, guess. so there's a difference between what's considered, a, a, a 10 days or less is considered a short-term suspension and the authority right. for imposing that, <laughs> you're absolutely correct, Leon. Um, we, we, we've dealt with it, administrators can do it. I, I, I say in consultation with the superintendent. Um, anything that is over 10 days is a board action. That's and that's right. why in the in the previous policy, I made that clear. Right. So the student may be suspended until it's until a school board meeting is what's killing uh, what's 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 yeah. the word, and that's not necessarily true. It's just that the language should be a student may uh, it be yeah, suspended it actually, for I mean, ten number... days or less without school board. Uh, it's hearing. Could I suggest maybe, maybe Dina, this has the language. Uh, if I if I could please. Yeah, sure. what, what if we said a school board meet a school board hearing must be conducted within ten days of the precipitating events? I don't know if that's the way to end that sentence, but does that capture what you're trying to say? Pretty if much. it's going to be more than ten days, 
No, this is well, you're saying it would be within ten days. It's saying schedule one. Schedule it will be held. It will be, be held. It will be yeah. conducted within ten days. He's not saying that there's excess time that you're going to fill up. He's saying we're going to schedule. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's putting the right. onus on us as board members as opposed to on this kid or and their families. So we're talking about a whole a different a separate sentence, correct? I, th I think I think a replacement sentence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I'm just trying to make sure this is clear about the suspension until the school board hearing. So, but this is specifically pertaining to the up to 10 days, you don't have to have a school board hearing. Correct. So, if it's going so, to be more than 10 days, you got to have a hearing. Right. Uh, so, here's what I would say. Uh, discipline, a, a student, if a student is charged or, or, or let me, my brain is misfiring, sorry. If, if a student, if the, if the suspension would exceed 10 school days, because you can have long-term suspensions and expulsions, they're, they're different, right? Um, if the suspension... Ten, 10 school days. Comma. A school board hearing must be conducted. If suspension is to be more than 10 days. The school board hearing must be conducted within the 10 days. Okay. Or 10 school days. That's from the precipitating incident. Does that make sense? Yep. Hey, Dina, I know it's your job, but I think it was really cool the way you cited uh, the suspension statute right off the top of your head. I looked it up and yeah, you're, you died right. <laughs> okay. I know it's what you do, but like, it was so cool. So, well <laughs> so is that okay? Then wait two now. So what I would, so I would get rid of the, the actual line that exists in the policy. Okay. So Lisa is going to strike that line and then have the replacement line. So, can I ask about? Or it could even say May, and because it could be a, a, an issue of timing. I'm not sure if you have to say shall exceed 10 school days, right? Because you're, the board's going to make a decision. You're going to get a recommendation. You may get a recommendation not to expel a student, but you may get a recommendation that says, I, I, and I'm a proponent of, of these because I'm not a proponent of suspension, but if you know, a student will be suspended for 25 school days unless student, you know, signs up with an, a SAP counselor, does whatever, whatever, right? You can do if then suspensions and you may not pick nine, you may not do an expulsion and anything between 10 and, and 90 is going to be a long-term suspension. If I took the, the May out and just turned it to exceeds, Get rid of shall and may. Well, it hasn't yet, though. Okay. Right. So we're going to leave it at may. Or is expected to or something. But may works. It shall just sounds like a command. It is. Most you know, okay. of our it language. Is. And so you haven't. Yeah. So may it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. May it is. And uh, I mean, we're still going to go come come back and come around once they go out to all the boards anyway. Did, right. So uh, number so number three, I, I highlighted it because of the elementary age. You do have you do have limitations. Although the the under eights can be suspended and can be expelled, but the 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 hurdle 
to to reach for what their conduct would be would be incredibly egregious um, and very difficult to reach. One of the things I want to point out while you're considering this um, is I, I highlighted it just for for that reason. Um, this is actually under at least if you slightly scroll up, this is outlining under for whether or not. Nope, other way. Yeah, no other way. So you saw what was above it. Okay. Okay, stop where you say, um, you've got recognized sanctions, you've got number five, recognizing the threat to the safety of students or the intent to disrupt, right? Ver the guns or the weapons is the one that does the one calendar year, the law does that. So I wasn't highlighting that to change what the one calendar year was, I was highlighting it more to point out that there are limitations with elementary age kids. I don't necessarily think that you need to put that in your policy because that in and of itself exists um, uh, under a separate regulatory authority, right? So there, it, it exists now under, under the statute. Okay, so uh, yeah, I thought you would want to have that in there, but you're saying no, we don't want right, and 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 I made a mistake on my number two in my big comment where it says expulsion is limited in time by statute to ninety days or remainder of the school year. The least one calendar year is the one that typically I think runs with the guns and weapons requirements. Is that that the expulsion will be for a year, and that's what this that this policy is talking about in in this section is talking about if you have a student who either is a threat. Um, or an intent to disrupt and posed by guns or weapons prohibited by your school policy, those are the kids under this section who are going to be expelled for at least one calendar year. And that comes from federal law. And so I did make a mistake in my comment. So DLA 5 is FYI not to be included. Okay. So I'm fine with that saying there. Okay. We'll move on to the next page over aiding other students. B. Uh, that one, I think I have to I have to check and see if the aiding other students falls under the federal. Another student may be expelled for at least one thousand year and treated in accordance with the provisions of Section A. Sanctions, right? Sanctions. Which is what we just read, and I said that you can do it for a student who brings in the gun and or or threatens to bring in the gun. You can do it for the one year if it fits the federal requirements. I don't know if the student who aids the other encourages the, the student, but isn't the one who um, brings the weapon to school. I don't know if the federal law is the one that says that they at least one calendar year. I suspect it probably does. So I would have to look that up, Leon, is what I'm saying. So, all right. I'm just trying to see how to leave this before we, we move on here. We, we'll want to then hold this policy until we get clarification on, on that ruling before we send it on. So you want to bring it back in December? We can. Okay. Yeah. Is that... Would the group wish to, to have uh, bring it back in December or have the clarification sent in to Lisa as to which one it is and whether it's this one year or not for both? What would you like? I'm good with December. December? I, that works for me. Sure. Okay. December. Is any other comments besides December? So we'll hold this politics for December, the, uh, the section notification and training down below, which all those things are stricken. Uh, we'll have any problem with that. Okay. Uh, on the back side, and since this is going to come back to us at that time, we'll still come back and look at those particular things in, in terms of the deletion if less than you have some problems with the deletions in here, we can delete, update, and then wait for the, 
the sanction information for the next time in December. That's what we're going to be looking for. Okay, Lisa, you're going to remind me of that too. Yes, ma'am. I will do that. Thank you, and Susan. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. We'll hold that. <laughs> We'll move on. Excuse me. Gibson, stop. So the next policy is is fifty four o five behavior intervention. Uh, in this particular policy, again, I'm going to open it up to the floor. For, we we know we need to change the word in terms of the district stuff at the top there to do that. What I did find out before we go on is is this forty five hundred rule. I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, so before we go on, Dean, is that correct? I mean, is that a typo of, in terms of 4,500 policy? So, so there should be, uh, so there, there's, there's a State Board of Education rule 4,500, which deals with restraint and seclusion and, and requires policies um, that talk about what you have here, physical restraint and everything. And so, I don't know if this was supposed to be 5405 or or 4500, but I, it seemed to me um, if you have the rule 4500 required policy that you wouldn't need this one. I, I don't know if you have the rule 4500 required policy. I, I didn't have it and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I didn't. Okay, so now I'm really not liking that I highlighted this. Okay, so you have an obligation under rule 40. I wondered to have a policy. I mean, this maybe could turn into it. Um, Chris, had a, Chris had a comment. Just, uh, just to say, I, I just found the 4,500 and forwarded it to Lisa. So maybe Lisa can okay. forward it to the rest of the committee. I, I just okay. did it. Just this, so you found it. Yeah. So if that's a behavior intervention piece that we needed to, to do, and the, the comment is if we have all of that, then why do we need to have behavior intervention policy? And that may be a question. If I know that we have a lot of questions that came up from the pairs and the vice versa and so forth to try to define those things. But I, I think what we needed to do is take the time to bring this back with the 4,500 rule and have a chance to read 15405 and the 4,500 rule to be able to make any decision as to which way we need to be going with this. Is there any other methods by which you think we should be taking care of this out there? So one of the things I also want to point out is that this also has, and I'm not sure when it was initially created, and I know I can look at the end and I don't need to know, but um, this also has the protection of policy part of, of being able to put hands on a kid, which exists under the statute, which was then Rule 4500 about came about because that was not sufficient protection um, for students in other situations. So I just want to make sure you all understand that. I do think you just need to know whether or not your policy for Rule 4500 fits it. Where you see things like physical restraint, mechanical or, or chemical restraint, the definitions of all of those things are contained in the actual Rule 4500. So it's sort of like if you don't really need another policy, why have a policy is sort of where I took it. Right. And so what I'm saying, what we need to do is get that 4,500 rule and mm -hmm. be able to and put it on the list with 5405 for the next meeting to, to determine whether we need 5405 or Need to take some of that information out of the rule and insert it into this one. So uh, we'll bring that back for next time. Uh, have a discussion. So I'm thinking that's the reason to do it. Like, I'm going to make a note. Next. Okay. Uh, that brings us up to uh, the uh, tracking sheet. We don't have any, and that tracking sheet is already uh, 
showing again where all of the policies are that are out there in terms of whether they had an opportunity to be warned and what date that they may be warned on. So, anybody have any problems or questions with that? Track and keep. All right, no, move on. Okay, very good. Uh, and then the other policies that we just looked at here at uh, in 19 and so forth. Uh, uh, 2020. Okay. Uh, for the next meeting, we we just uh, talked about bringing two things back, and so we'll do those. And then we have some uh, recommended for future reviews by Jonathan, which is in here today. It's 2200 non-discriminatory policies and mainly uh, and your chance to read those, but they were probably hadn't been reviewed in quite a while, and we need to review them. So review that one, harassment of employees. Thought we had did that, but maybe not. That was probably the student one. There was a student one, it's right. Bullying prevention adults. That wouldn't, I, <laughs> we'll look at it. We can put those back on it. So why don't we add those on and I didn't get to put down the cross reference piece that may be coming from the school board for that. So uh, at least those particular policies that may be on there. I don't want to overload the policy uh, sheet for next time. Mm -hmm. So about the four or five would be good and we have the others unless than we meet in a pre-meeting and think we can cover more than what we got okay. so far. Is that clear for everyone? And so, uh, With that, that brings us to the next policy meeting to be December 5th. And I'm hoping that we'll have a few more of the, well, we had only maybe one person missing, uh, I think. So, Fran might have been missing. Any questions? I do. Jackie, go ahead. Yes. So um, I, I was looking for um, all, all of these, and I, I didn't find any that had um, the blue underlining on it. Uh, I went to the policy uh, list on the web, and I found all the policies, but I, I didn't see the uh, blue underlining correction. So where That's was that? That's correct. They shouldn't have been on the web because we're working on them. And these are working copies that were sent out to each of the members directly in the mail to look at. And I tried to make sure I went on both. I, I took the, my, the computer and set it up and looked at what was on the website. I took the, the email that went out from Lisa with all the copies on them and pulled them up and put them side by side. So the blue copies are in the the, the agenda items that we're supposed to have here tonight, not on the website. Okay, but I didn't get the blue copies. How's that? Okay. And I don't know where they were. The only the only underlying blue stuff that was different from what went in the packet, I just added the names of the additional districts. That was that only thing initially. Okay, so I guess I missed the packet is what I'm saying. And I only got so the agenda. You, you received no notification or no packet for this meeting? Well, um, maybe I missed it. You know, sometimes things happen and yeah. you know, things go bump in the night for me. So evidently there were two notices for this meeting. And the second notice is the one that I looked at. And the first notice is the one with the packet, correct? Um, I I only said one everything. Notice. I only got one. So maybe for the logistics of doing things, if we give a, if you have, I mean, it's, man, it's not a big deal. Get, I'm, I'm going to say, if you don't get what you think you need for a December meeting, give me a call. Let's have okay. a discussion. And then oh. I'll make sure we get it in the whole everybody well, else. Sure. Up here it, because, it's uh, not a big deal, but I, you know, because she was saying you, everybody got it and I didn't get it, but uh, I will look back and see if I did get it. And, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, uh, and I don't want to make a, a fuss. I would say it was sent out Thursday because we, no. 
Friday. Friday. It was set Friday and probably about 4.15, 4.20. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the, I, I just got the agenda on it. It's, right. and if, if you click open the agenda and click on the word agenda, it will take you to the packet on the website. Oh. Yeah. I did that. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what you click on that word. Oh, and that's I had to do it. And I'm, I'm doing do it, it right, right here now. Okay, so here's my problem. I had to do it twice. So you can click on it, and then it clicks on and it says yes. leave mail and open this link. Yeah. Okay, I got it. It's my fault totally. So sorry. Yep. That's good. Well, you didn't think Lisa was going to let you blame her. Shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I agree. It depends on the laptop that you have and, and how you do it. In my, on my computer at home, I can pull it up and then I have to download it and clip on it and do it. But on the iPad, I have to tap it twice to yeah. be able yeah. to do it. Yeah. So it's it's personal equipment knowledge. It's what that means. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, so time, is that I'll, kind of like knock three times? Yes. <laughs> I'll um take I'll entertain a motion to adjourn if so it's moved. been moved and second on that. Is there any objections to us having to uh, adjourn tonight? It's serious. I'm hearing none. Yeah. So I want to thank you all for coming and we'll keep striving to do the best job possible under the conditions that we're having to. CAT TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAT TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.